Hello! Today I will be presenting on our project, Mapping the World's Offline Population. My name is Tova and I worked with Johnny, Ukujan, Jacob, Robert, and Daniel on this project. Our partners are the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, along with UNICEF and Project GIGA, all agencies in the UN. Today, two-thirds of the world's school-aged children have no internet access at home. The lack of connectivity for children doesn't just limit their ability to connect online, it prevents them from competing in the modern economy, isolating individuals and perpetuating the digital divide. Less than one in 20 school-aged children from low-income countries have internet connection at home, compared with nearly 18 in 20 from high-income countries. COVID-19 has exacerbated this disparity as children relied on the internet for their schooling, and for children who lack internet, that means they've not had proper schooling for the last year and a half. ITU only knows internet statistics on the country level, based on survey data, which is often of inconsistent quality. Our project builds a toolbox for getting connectivity statistics that are more current, granular, and accurate than previously. What used to take months and working with individual countries to collect local survey data can now take a matter of hours with our tool and it's also cheaper. Our tool outputs a priority list of schools that need internet connection with an emphasis on the amount of people that would benefit from each school. Why schools? Because these often serve as community hubs and places of learning. Our second goal is to use the local area internet statistics to determine national or province level statistics for countries not currently mapped by ITU. For our project, we've gathered and trained a model on Brazil schools and then use this train model to predict for schools in Thailand and the Philippines. First, we had to determine what might be helpful in indicating if an area around a school has high internet connectivity. We came up with a few open source data sets. One is speed test data, a good indicator for how fast the internet is running in certain areas. Cell tower data is helpful in indicating where mobile connectivity is located and if schools are within range of a cell tower. Population data is helpful in having accurate population numbers. Then Facebook user data. This works by showing how many users are within a given radius of any school. Of course, there are issues in places where Facebook usage is not high. Lastly, we have satellite data in three different forms. Nighttime lights shows areas with lots of light and presumably high levels of internet. Global human modification is a data set created by engineers. And measuring vegetation is our last data set. The assumption is that areas with higher vegetation are more rural and have less internet connection, while areas with low levels are more urban and have higher connection. Nighttime imagery, global human modification, and Facebook users prove to be the most important features powering our model. And why are these specific predictors so important? These data sets are continuous, meaning they don't stop at a certain spatial scale or boundary. They're globally ubiquitous and standardized. Calling this data for school buffer zones can work for any school in the world, and it doesn't contain the human error that survey data does. We then trained a model that extracts patterns from the data. On average, our predictions are only 5% off base, provided here as the mean absolute error for easy interpretation. We are particularly proud of this 5% because it is attuned to minimize error for schools with lower internet connectivity. We can then confidently deliver a priority list to our partner and be done with our job but not so fast. Does this also work for other countries? We use the same model to predict school connectivity for Thailand. This map shows every school point in Thailand and its predicted online population. And it seems sensible both as school points and as aggregated provinces, with red being the least connected schools. However, we cannot quantify how well we did because of the inconsistent quality of the survey data. What we can say is that these are schools and provinces that need to be prioritized and where in internet connection is most needed. We then applied our previous model and also trained a new model using the Philippines data. The average connectivity from the applied Brazil model is 60%, while the retrained model suggests 30% average connectedness. We found that the retrained Philippines model fits more accurately to the Philippines survey data, but the survey was conducted in 2019 and after discussing with our partners, they feel that the applied Brazil model is more precise with the current state of the internet in the Philippines. We are thrilled to provide more timely, accurate, and granular data. Our project is only the beginning, as ITU can take our methodology and continue to apply to new countries. 
By creating a toolbox, we provide evidence-based policy on schools and communities to connect to the internet. In this way, we all win, as we minimize the digital divide and prepare future generations for success in the 21st century. Thank you.